Welcome to the mathematics class of Mr. Larry Whittington. Stay tuned as Mr. Whit get on here today and speak to us about fractions. I hope you figure to understand what he gonna teach. Get your ink pen and your pencil out your calculator and get ready to learn something from Mr. Whittington, Fort Bend Tutoring. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's lesson is going to be about multiplying rational expressions. Yeah. Okay. And what are rational expressions by the way? That's right, they're just fractions. So here we have number one. We have 3x squared divided by 9x cubed times 8x cubed divided by 6x. What I prefer to do in a problem like this is to simplify the coefficients first, the numbers, all right? So especially if there's a lot of variables going on at one time like this one kind of has here, I'm going to start by simplifying the numbers first. So I recognize that 3 and 6 have 3 in common, so they could be reduced. So I can definitely say that 3 goes into itself once, that 3 goes into 6 twice, and then I can reduce the 2 and the 8 by saying that 2 goes into itself once and 2 goes into 8 four times. So in my first step here, I'm just worried about the numbers. Yeah, don't worry, I'll be getting to those variables shortly. Multiplying straight across, I'll end up with 4x to the fifth power. That's right. Multiplying like bases, you need to add the exponents. So the x to the second power times the x to the third power, you add the 2 plus the 3 to get x to the fifth power. Then in the denominator, 9 times 1 is still 9, and x to the third power times x is just going to give me x to the fourth power. All right. From here, I'm going to bring over the 4 ninths, that 4 over 9, and please note that the variable will remain wherever the largest exponent is. So notice that in the numerator I have x to the fifth power, and in the denominator I have x to the fourth power. Well, 5 is bigger than 4, so that means that my variable x will remain in the numerator. As far as the exponent is concerned, just subtract the exponent. So 5 minus 4 will give you 1, x to the first power. And this is going to be my answer. All right. Now that last tip I just gave you about the variable remaining wherever the largest exponent is, I normally will only do that step after I ensure that all of my exponents on the variables are positive. So if you have any negative exponents, start by getting rid of those negative exponents first. All right. Well, that's problem number one. Problem number two. 5m plus 25 over 10 times 12 over 6m plus 30. So when I'm presented with a problem like this, true enough, I do prefer to simplify before I multiply, but I'm going to do one other step in this problem. I'm going to factor the numerator and the denominator here first. It's just bothering me. I see that this 5m plus 25 can be factored by 5. I see in the denominator over here, this 6m plus 30, you can factor out a 6. So let's factor first. All right, let's do that. So in the numerator, I'm going to factor out a 5. That'll leave me with m plus 5 all over 10 times 12 over 6 times m plus 5. Just like that. Okay? So I factored out the greatest common factor. Remember, when factoring, you always look for the GCF first. And I'm factoring out the greatest common factor because, you know, that's what you do when you're factoring. Then... I'll be simplifying before I multiply because I prefer smaller numbers. So notice that 5 and 10 can be reduced by 5. 5 goes into itself once. 5 goes into 10 twice. And 6 goes into itself once and goes into 12 twice. And look here. Look at those twos right there. Yep. Going into itself once and once. Notice that we too also have m plus 5 in the numerator and in the denominator here. So that m plus 5 will go into itself once, and this m plus 5 will go into itself once as well. So bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, we just end up with 1 over 1, which is just 1. And that's it. This problem was just 1 to begin with. Moving on to the next problem. Let's check it out. Problem number 3. In problem number three, I have x squared plus x over 5 times 25 over xy plus y. Well, just like the previous problem, I want to factor completely before I try to simplify and multiply and all that good stuff. So I'm going to factor first. Yep, factor first. Factor as much as possible. In the numerator, I'm going to factor out an x. That leaves me with x plus 1 over 5. Yeah, I didn't like the way that line went too far. So, no, that, that sucks too. Oh, they both suck. All right, so that's much better. There we go. So I have x times x plus 1 over 5. This is going to be times 25 over, I can factor out a y. 
Yeah, let's factor out a y. That leaves me with x plus 1 here. And now I will simplify as much as possible. Hopefully everything cancels out, right? So 5 goes into itself once. 5 goes into 25 five times. And then notice that the factor of x plus 1 is in the numerator and in the denominator. See, you can simplify vertically or diagonally, but never horizontally. All right, so x plus 1 goes into itself once, x plus 1 goes into itself once, and then I'll multiply straight across because remember, at the end of the day, this is just a fraction. So all those things that we have taught you in the previous video, multiplying fractions, you can apply in problems like this as well because a rational expression is a fraction. Now, multiplying straight across, I'll have x times 5 gives me 5x, and then the denominator, 1 times y is just y. So that's my answer, 5x over y, done and done. That's it. That was problem number three. Problem number three. Moving on to the next problem, ladies and gentlemen. We have problem number four. Let's center the screen here. Let's center the screen. Let's get this screen centered. We have 3m minus 15 over 4m minus 20 times m squared minus 10m plus 25 over 12m minus 60. So once again, I want to factor completely before I simplify and multiply. So that's going to be my first step. In the numerator here, I can factor out a 3. So factoring out a 3, I'm left with m minus 5 in the parentheses. In the denominator, I'm going to factor out a 4, and that leaves me with m minus 5 times. In the numerator here, I have a quadratic trinomial. So in factoring that, remember, I'm looking for two numbers that are multiply to give me 25 and add to give me 10. Well, in this case, 5 and 5 will do the job. So I'll end up with m minus 5 times m minus 5. All right, And I could simplify that into m minus 5 squared, but in a problem like this, that will not help me. So I'm going to leave it expanded as m minus 5 times m minus 5. In the denominator, I can factor out a 12. So factoring out 12, that leaves me with m minus 5. And here is my problem fully factored. OK, so what I'm looking for is an opportunity to simplify before I multiply. And notice that I have 3 and 12 here, right? So 3 goes into itself once. 3 goes into 12 four times. All right, that was good. Uh, I can go ahead and cancel out these x minus 5s here. In other words, they go into themselves once. And I also have an opportunity to do that exact same process over here in the second fraction, a.k.a. rational expression. All right, so I think we've simplified everything, right? So multiplying everything straight across, multiplying horizontally, I'll end up with m minus 5 in the numerator all over 4 times 4, which is 16. And that's the answer. All right, let's get a red box around this. Okay, just red boxed it. Done. That was problem number 4. All right, so remember, factor completely and then look for those exact factors to cancel out. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. Problem number five. All right, giving you some decent problems today. Here with problem number five, I have x squared plus 2x minus 15 over x squared plus 11x plus 30 times x squared plus 2x minus 24 all over x squared minus 8x plus 15. So the first thing I want to do is factor completely. That's the first thing to do. I'm looking for two numbers that are multiplied to give me 15 and subtract to give me 2. Well, that'll be 5 and 3. So factoring this out, I'll have x plus 5 times x minus 3 over two numbers that multiply to give me 30 and add to give me 11. That's going to be 5 and 6. So I'll have x plus 5 times x plus 6, like so. And then in the second fraction, I'm looking for two numbers, two factors of 24, that'll multiply to give me 24, obviously, and subtract to give me 2. Well, that's going to be 6 and 4. So I'll have x plus 6 times x minus 4. All right. And the denominator, I'm looking for two numbers that are multiplied to give me 15 and add to give me 8. That's 5 and 3. So they both have to be negative. This will be x minus 5 times x minus 3. Now, if you need a reminder, you need help, you need tips on how to factor these types of quadratic trinomials, please take a look at Factoring Quadratic Trinomials Part 1. Yeah, for these exact type of problems, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to put a link right down here. There you go, right down there. You can check that out. 
if you're on a, if you're on a computer or a laptop, you can click on the link right there and it'll take you right to that video right now. Just saying. All right, from there, let's continue. I'm going to look for an opportunity to simplify my like factors, okay? As long as one is in the numerator and one is in any denominator, they can be canceled out. Mm -hmm. And they cancel to one, ladies and gentlemen, not zero, by the way. So here, I'm going to say that x plus five goes into itself once here, and it goes into itself once there. The x plus six will go into itself once here and once there. And x minus three will go into itself once here and once here, mm -hmm. like so. What I'm left with is multiplying straight across, x minus 4 over x minus 5. All right. Now, it's important to note, ladies and gentlemen, that you cannot simplify the x's here. As long as you have multiple terms in your numerator and the denominator, you cannot simply reduce or cancel out, let's say, the x's here. The reason for that is because now you have four terms involved in this expression, right? You got the x, you got the negative 4, you got the x, you got the negative 5 there. And all of these terms would have had to have something in common in order for you to reduce it, to simplify it. So it's in its lowest terms. You can't reduce it any further, so don't try. It has to be exactly the same factor in order to cancel out. In other words, notice how in the previous step how we had x plus 5 over x plus 5. Those were exact factors. That's why we were able to cancel them out. But notice that these factors here, this x minus 4 and this x minus 5, they're not the same, so you can't cancel them out. So this is the answer. Done. All right. I think I got another one for you. Here you go. Problem number 6. In problem number six, I have x cubed plus y cubed over x squared minus y squared times x plus y over x squared minus xy plus y squared. In the numerator, we will be factoring. In fact, we'll be factoring as much as we can, factoring completely throughout the problem. And in the numerator, this is a sum of cubes. So I need to factor using the sum of cubes formula. If you need help with factoring sum of cubes, check out our video. There you go. Factoring the sum of cubes, okay? So here in the numerator, I'll end up with x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. Yep. In the denominator, I have a difference of squares. And once again, we have a video for that. Check out factoring a difference of two squares. All right. Got a link right down there. Okay, so factoring this x squared minus y squared, you'll end up with x plus y times x minus y. There you go. Times the numerator of x plus y over this denominator here, which cannot be factored, by the way. Yeah, this x squared minus y squared plus y squared, it's not factorable. You can't factor that at all. In other words, there aren't two numbers that'll multiply to give me one and add to give me one. It's not happening. All right, so we'll just bring this down as is. So this will be x squared minus xy plus y squared. All right, so this is the entire problem all factored out, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so what do we look to do next? We look to simplify before we multiply. I'm looking for identical factors that can be canceled out, that can be reduced. All right, so that being the case, I have the x plus y going into itself once, x plus y goes into itself once here, and I also have this trinomial that's identical to the one in the denominator that we said was prime. This x squared minus xy plus y squared cancels out. That goes into itself once, that goes into itself once there. So what you're left with in this problem is the following. You'll have x plus y over x minus y, and that's it. Yeah, I know it's tempting. The x's, mm -hmm. the y's, yeah, you can't do anything with it. It's simplified. Don't even try. You, you should just look away. Just look away here because I know you were trying to simplify that and you can't. You cannot reduce this, okay? All right. You can't do it. It's, it's done. It's, it's, you should just stop while you're ahead. All right. So that's problem number six. So that's going to do it for multiplying rational expressions, ladies and gentlemen. It was fun for me. Hopefully it was fun for you. And as always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. We really appreciate you subscribing. So go ahead and click on that subscribe button, man. All right. In the future, we'll be seeing you with more math videos. Peace. Oh, Lord, there's so many kind of fractions. They got proper, improper, addings, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, mixed numbers, LCD. Oh, that's like my TV. Simplifying. And my favorite of all, your least common denominator. <laughs>